Hey everybody, okay, it is uh, just after one o'clock and today is chapters 11 and 12 from the Lyra Chronicles Guardians of Magic. And um, we are um, moving into the meat of the story, which is great. Went for a long walk today, saw a lot of bluebells, took some pictures, I'll post them later. And um, still walking a 5K. They say it's um, good to exercise the lungs after you re recover because the cough stays around for a while for some, for me it is. And, but uh, good news is I'm still here. Um, hello, Diane, hello, Mike, and um, hope everybody's doing well. I am, uh, I'm gonna start on my mural project in the hallway and I will share the pictures. And um, finished one Lyra book, starting another today. All that starts June 29th, there'll be new Lyra. Working on <clears throat> maybe trying to get squeeze in a um, short troll story um, for in the meantime, and um, in the in the instead, let's just get started with chapter eleven. I don't have a lot to say today. Quarantine it makes it hard to come up with new stuff, but um, it's still great to keep hearing from y'all. And um, there's a new Witches of Pressler Street that comes out tomorrow. We are actually hitting publish today um, because Amazon is taking a little longer. So if you're uh, wily and you look on Amazon, you might find um, um, Magic Underground today, but you'll hopefully definitely find it tomorrow. And uh, there's a new Lone Valkyrie coming out this week. And uh, soon there'll be a, the book three of War Mage and book two of um, Gothra. So lots going on, and um, nice to see Mike here again, Mike Mitchell, nice to see you here. And uh, let's get started. So chapter 11, <clears throat> and um, Lois is at her usual post at the window. Leela is ignoring both of us in the other room. Uh, chapter 11, Lyra opened the door to the guest house and found the troll sleeping in the potted fern near the couch, his belly full. Hate to wake you, little dude, but we have business to get to. She nudged him, watching him uncurl, stretching out his tiny legs and letting out a wide yawn. He opened his eyes and looked up at Lyra, letting out a cackle, followed quickly by a gassy burp. Lyra stood up straight, batting at the air in front of her. Oh God, fuck, what is that? What did you eat while I was gone? Part of the sofa? The troll let out another cackle and stood up in the dirt, rubbing his back against the smooth green leaves. What you want? We have a mission? Don't know if I'd say we're going on a mission. A little dramatic, Elwood. More like a look and see for shifters. <clears throat> the troll bounded out of the plant and hopped to the couch, his claws digging in as he pulled himself up to the top. Ooh, that's some bad shit. He tied his cape around his shoulders and pulled on the mask. Is that really necessary? Do you need to hide your identity? Meh, it's a look. Where are we headed? That's the tricky part. Hop on while I see if I can use myself like a magical GPS and get, her get a better idea of location. Lyra held out her hand as the troll climbed into her palm, and she lifted him to her shoulder. She shut her eyes and pulled in energy through her feet, feeling it surge through her as she set out an intention. Find the shifter. Show me his location. The stream of magic doubled over on itself, knocking Lyra forward as she let out a soft grunt, and Yumfuck held onto her jacket, his fur bristling from the energy passing under his feet. <coughs> Lyra felt a burning sensation in the scar in her belly as the energy lifted her onto her toes. The stronger the intention, the more powerful the surge of magic. Turner Underwood's e words echoed in her head. Find the shift, she whispered. She felt the magic pull her out into the light stream as images flashed on either side of her. She breathed in suddenly. A sweet aroma, grapes. No, wait, this is different. She passed over acres of grapes growing on wooden trellises to a large white stucco house with a clay tile roof in the distance. The closer they got, the more Lyra could feel the presence of dark energy moving around the house. The energy slipped in easily and she found herself rolling along a long, cool hallway lined with empty oak wooden barrels on either side. Don't argue with the energy. It knows what it's doing. More of Turner's wisdom, keeping Lyra from short-circuiting her request. This is not where he was being held. The energy hesitated, feeling her distrust as she made herself take a deep breath and let it out. Relax, shouted the troll into her ear. She heard it like a squeaky echo through the thick ribbons of magic surrounding her. Lyra felt the magic slowing as it curled up to a thick metal door, easily passing through like vapor. 
On the other side of the door was an old storage room, dank and dark with a high ceiling. Lear could hear grunting and something scraping along the cement floor. She drew back in the living room of the guest house, a shudder passing through her. There must be close to a hundred, screamed inside her head, screaming inside her head in anger. They were packed in like cattle, some clawing each other in frustration or boredom, shifting in and out of human and beast. The energy rolled around the room, hugging the wall till it got to a back corner and stopped, hovering near the ceiling. Standing with his back against the wall was the man Lyra had seen before. She took in every detail of his description, memorizing his face. She felt a shift in the energy as he jerked his face up and looked directly at her. That's fucking impossible. Lyra saw the anger in his eyes, an absence of fear, unlike the others who were an even mixture of both. Who are you? Find the location. Yumfuck was yelling in her ear again. Keep your eye on the ball, he squeaked. Tell the motherfucking energy what you want. Show me the location. The energy pulled out of the room as Lyra kept looking back at the man standing naked in the large room till she couldn't see him anymore over the sea of bodies. Lyra felt the energy pass through the wall and found herself back outside, moving around a large estate. Show me where I am. Her frustration grew as the magic went in circles, creating whirls of light. Focus, chirped the troll as he pinched the skin along her neck. Lyra instinctively raised a hand to slap at the bite, but Yumfuck jumped out of the way, cackling. Son of a bitch, like being bit by a green-headed mosquito. Okay, focus. The energy knows what it's doing. What are we circling? In and out and around the magic went as Lyra saw the name. Icardi. It was on everything. Stamped on barrels, hanging on a sign above the door of the building, on labels of bottles of wine. The Icardi Vineyards, established 1989, Napa, California. It's a staging ground. Lyra felt the rush of energy pull through her, running like a river. It was familiar, but still uncomfortable, as the magic drained quickly out of her, snapping her back into her body. Her mouth popped open, sucking in air as she opened her eyes. The troll was leaning out from her shoulder, staring at her, inches from her face. Ready to go? What the fuck? That's disturbing. Personal space, young fuck. Yeah, ready to go. Need one more thing before we go. I don't think this one is going to be pretty, and I'm keeping my word. No running into the burning buildings by myself anymore. Chapter 12. Hi, Grace. Hello, Bill and Diane <clears throat> and everyone else and all the ships at sea. Chapter 12. Lyra stood on the edge of the vineyards near the road. Yumfuck stood on her shoulder wearing his cape and mask. You know that cape and mask won't work when you grow into battle size. Works for now. I'll keep it on a little longer. Trouble ahead. The troll glanced backward. Little trouble back there, too. Behind them, an open portal crackled and sparked. Lyra rolled her eyes and picked up a pebble from the ground, throwing it into the portal. Hurry your ass up before it closes. I thought you used these things all the time. That's how you tear a hole in the veil. Louis poked his head out of the opening and stepped out, stamping his feet on the dirt path as the portal finally closed. The sword was strapped to his back. Used portals all the time in my previous profession. He brushed off his suede pants and looked around at the vines and up at the open sky. Stealing, Lyra recognized the way the vines were laid out and could see the tops of buildings in the distance. Acquiring, not a bad place for a hunt. Not sure if we're here for a hunt or a rescue or both. Oh, this is a hunt, trust me. Only question of the day will be if we're the ones being hunted, and that answer may vary hour to hour. The dark wizarding families don't play well with others and have only one rule, beat the shit out of their opponents. That would be us today. Lyra flexed her hands and circled her arms. Wouldn't mind doing a little shit kicking myself today. Been a while. You have a plan about how we go in there? Louis pulled the sword out of its sheath on his back and held it up in front, limbering up for the fight. Or do we wander through the grapevines and start the party early? We go in under a glamour that won't hold the closer we get, and then we take down as many as we can. Our goal is to let out the shifters. Louis stopped moving the sword back and forth and wrinkled his forehead. What the fuck are you talking about, lady? Isn't that the army we will have to fight? I'm guessing that's not the whole truth. Fucking A, and you're guessing our limbs at best and our lives at worst if you're wrong. Something like that. Lyra was making herself take measured breaths, feeling the energy trails around her. Traces of dark energy were everywhere, but all of them fading. The familiars are out. The families are out. Or at least most of them are. We might just have the element of surprise. I don't think they realized we could find them so easily. Then let's get to it. Find out if a shifter still has a conscience, or even thinks at all, because we roll like that. 
Lyra pulled an energy through her feet, letting it power up through her spine and out her hands, the symbols appearing, flashing over and over as her eyes glowed. The air shimmered around them as they became transparent to anyone looking out a window, invisibly moving through the vineyard. Louis glanced over at Lyra's arms, trying to read some of the symbols, his eyes widening as he saw the rapid report. For the love of... Your magic is predicting outcomes. Fuck, we do not win in all of them. What's the fuck in knowing you will win? What's the fun in knowing you will win? Odds never been against you before? That's kind of an average day for me. Louis let out a sigh and gripped the sword tighter. Stay aware. The sword was speaking to him again. He was taking small comfort from the lack of general panic from, his, from the weapon. You look a little freaked out, Louis. Jackson led me to believe you'd seen your fair share of shit going down. That's usually shit I'm actively running from with some sweet prize in my possession. I'm a virgin at seeking it out and walking right into it. They were midway through the vineyards as Louis saw something pass an upstairs window in one of the buildings. He instinctively stopped and had to walk faster to catch up with Lyra. She had made peace with what was to come and her jaw was set. Damn girl, I take it going at trouble is kind of your thing. You might say that, more of a career for me. Okay, from here out, we go silent. You watch for me for signals. No one should be able to see us. Should? There's very powerful old magic used here, the kind that's supposed to be illegal on both planets. I can't guarantee we won't step over some line and find ourselves bare naked, so to speak. Great, and we're an army of two. You never did answer me. Before we go in, how many shifters are we setting loose? It's an army of three. Don't count out Yumfuck. He'll rip off a few heads if necessary. I'd say about a hundred or so, give a take. A hundred. Okay, silence. Louis mouthed motherfuckers as he gripped the sword even tighter. Lyra didn't even flinch as she approached the warehouse. Let's go one more chapter because we can. Let's do chapter 13 and more people have joined us. Hi, Karen, and hello, John, and uh, hi, Diane. Chapter 13. Lyra and Louis got to the other side of the vineyards. A large gravel opening separated them from a main house to the left and a large warehouse directly in front that stretched to the right. Large aluminum roll doors were standing open just to the right. Security seems a little lax. Louis peered into the darkness of the warehouse, noting a door at the far side <clears throat> and another opening at the back. Yumfuck ran down Lear's arm and dropped to the ground. His fur was standing on end. He took off at a run and smelled around the door deep inside the warehouse, instantly growing to his full height at eight feet, standing back, waiting for Lyra's command. Smells like dogs, a lot of them. Lyra could feel it too, or shifters, that's not all. They left a few assholes to watch the place, she whispered. They know we're here. Lyra could see the rolls of glittering dark magic billowing out from the building, signaling someone's approach. Too late to get more help. Then we fight, whispered Louis, if it's the last good thing we do. With honor and to the end, Come on, motherfuckers, growled the troll. Louis looked up at the troll in surprise just as Emmerich appeared in the large opening of the warehouse, a sneer on his face. Hate it when the assholes like to make grand entrances. Lyra stuck to Hagen's rules. Let the idiots go first. Several of his cousins appeared behind him, Toby off to the far left, sweating profusely, his eyes wide. The troll opened his mouth wide, letting out a roar that rumbled along the ground, hitting them in a sound wave that knocked over a smaller witch near the front. She scrambled back to her feet, her face beat red with embarrassment and anger. Hold the sword out in front and point the tip toward them. Louis knew enough to just follow the sword's lead. His muscles rippled along his arms as he waited, tense. The symbols along Lear's arms and neck glowed as the glamour peeled away from them, revealing where they stood. The symbols flashed, turning over like a fast-moving ticker. Toby trembled where he stood, but he didn't dare run. Emmerich would have cut him down before he got very far. Lyra Barons, Emmerich taunted. Thanks for making this convenient. I hate pissants. This would be annoying Hagen if you were here. Funny you should mention him. Lois emerged out of the vineyards to Lyra's right. Don't be mad. I had Hagen put a tracker on your skin. I knew you'd think bringing one wizard and a swearing troll would count as asking for help. Besides, it was a slow day. Hagen's acting as backup back at the ranch. Lois held out her wand. Hello, Emmerich. Haven't seen you since your christening. Cried the entire time. Emmerich frowned, looking around nervously. Hello, Aunt Lois. This isn't your fight. Lyra looked back and forth between the two. Don't know when you got here, Lois, but I'm glad to see you. You sure you can fight, family? This is awkward, said Louis. Not my first time, sadly. This is the dark branch of the family. We're all overachievers. It's just some of us had different ambitions. Lois raised her wand and pointed at Emmerich, scowling. 
Raise your hand to a friend of mine, Emmerich, and you make it my fight. Back up now, and we'll walk away. No, we won't. I came here for a reason. Not leaving till it's done. Lyra took a step forward as she formed a fireball between her hands. Set an intention. She pitched it right at Emmerich's chest and watched as he raised his wand, frantically whispering a spell. Lois watched in horror, not sure what to do as the fireball slid apart at the last moment, hitting the front line of millennial witches and wizards, spraying fiery buckshot, setting small blazes on their clothes. A few dropped their wands, busy patting down their shirts or the crotch of their pants. Emmerich regained his composure first, countering with a spell to douse the flames. The thin smile returned to his lips as he glanced behind him. He retreated back, enticing Lyra to follow him. About time, she growled. She formed another fireball and aimed it at Emmerich's feet, knocking him down. The game was growing tiring. So far, this is too fucking easy. Louis followed close behind her as Lois took up the rear, easily countering the spells of young wizards and witches. Toby hung back in the shadows, watching. He'd always liked Aunt Lois. He never expected to have to fight her. Besides, the stories about her were legendary. Lyra crept forward, entering the large building into the main area used for tastings and large parties. Small tables standing at chest height were dotted around the room, and a long bar was across the back. To the right was the door Lyra was looking for that led to the old storage, partially underground. A padlock on the door. Seemed old school. Sirius appeared out of the shadows and waved his wand, knocking the wind out of Lyra, sending her into the air, rolling like a barrel before dropping her hard to the ground. Instincts took over, and she rolled to her feet, crouched low. The troll growled in anger and took a long swipe at Emmerich, nicking the skin along his face and drawing a thin line of blood. Emmerich raised his wand as the troll swiped again, snapping the maple wood easily in two, leaving a gash across Emmerich's hand. Lois raised her wand and sent, uh, sent, and sent Emmerich flying, slamming him into a far wall and knocking him out, for his own good. Louis rushed forward, the sword directing him to swing wide as the tip cut a gash in the witch's arm, causing her to cry out and drop her wand. Lyra saw Sirius smile, and she realized they were being baited with the younger set, drawn further into the building. That's okay, motherfuckers. I see it coming. Lyra heard the howling and grunting as the ground thundered beneath them. Sirius suddenly turned and pointed his wand at the padlock, easily unlocking it with a simple spell. The door burst open, pushing off its hinges as the shifters finally got their first full first taste of freedom, starved for days. They were hungry for any kind of meat they could find, and weren't in a picky mood. Shit just got very deep in here. Louis swung his sword at the beast as it sang out a metallic note in the air. They were volleyed fireballs, breaking apart into small piece-sized scattershot, keeping them at bay, but just barely. She kept an eye on Sirius off to the side, who was hungrily watching his experiment, hoping for a bloody success story. You're still just as annoying as ever, brother. Lois waved her wand in a circle over her head and sent out a lasso of light, encircling Sirius, binding his arms to his side. He, he easily broke through it, a guttural laugh escaping his lips as he held onto one end of the lasso, snapping it back at Lois, whipping her across the chest. You've always underestimated me, sister. By the way, it was me who broke your favorite figurine when you were ten. Fuck me, they're having a reunion, yelled Louis as he raised the sword over his head, ready to make his first kill of the night. One beastie down, ninety-nine left to go. I make a nifty drinking song. No, yelled Lyra, as she eyed the bracelet on her wrist. Last measure, it comes off. She scanned the group, looking for the man she had seen earlier, but there was no human among them. They were all transformed into beasts. This may not work. The horde of claws and fangs approached, slashing the air in front of them. Lyra, you're going to have to get over this and let me take out a few, or we're dinner. There's not much choice here. Lyra glanced over to make sure Lois was keeping Sirius busy as she sent out waves of energy, shoving the beast back just enough to buy time. He's in here, I know it. Show yourself. Her chest heaved up and down from breathing so hard to contain the energy it took to push them back inches, their claws waving just in front of her face. She wasn't gonna be able to do it for much longer unless the, brace unless the bracelet came off. I'm risking Louie and Yum Fuck. The troll sensed her reluctance to kill and stood by her side, towering over her, howling at the shifters. Lyra pushed the thread of energy into the mass of twisting bodies. Trust the magic. A howl erupted from the center, loud and angry, echoing off the tin ceiling. The mass of fur fell back, still growling as they moved away from Lyra, crouching down just enough for the beast who had, left out, who had let out the howl to do it again. Thank God, the Alpha. I was right. You were gambling? Louis, in case you haven't noticed, the fucking world has changed, and everything is pretty much a gamble from here on out. Get used to it. Lyra kept her eyes on the silverback as he reared his head back and howled again. 
He lowered his chin and stared into Lear's eyes, a cold, hungry glare with his teeth bared. Just because we found the Alpha doesn't mean he's up for bargaining. Attack! Sirius sent out sparks from his wand, sending small currents of pain into the crowd of shifters. Lyra saw her chance and turned on Sirius, directing everything at him and removing her energy from the pack of human wolves hungry to eat something. She wrapped Sirius as tightly as she could in waves of energy, squeezing tight as the air rushed out of his lungs. The pack inched closer to her, glancing back toward the Alpha. Lyra's arms were straining as she pressed Sirius's ribs in on his heart. The muscles along her neck stood out against the symbols as Yumfuck moved to be right by her side. Lyra looked directly at the Alpha and yelled, run, run, motherfuckers, run. The Alpha growled and dropped to all fours running right at Lyra as Louis raised his sword to defend her. No, we stand our ground. Louis kept the sword raised, ready to strike if he had to, but the Alpha beard at the last moment, brushing against Lyra, running toward the path that led between the trellises, swiping at the tender vines as he went. Lyra felt the wiry hair brush against her arm, close enough to feel the warmth in the coiled muscle. The pack all dropped to the ground, quickly following their new leader, streaming around Louis, Lois, <laughs> brushing against them as they ran past. Yumpfuck growled as they moved around him, staying close to Lyra, a rising steady stream of beasts, some still emerging from the depths below. It's a fucking muscular fur blanket, Louis whispered in awe as he held perfectly still, letting them pass. A sea of shifters that could tear them apart and stretched out as far as they could see till most of the beasts passed by them and ran into the dimming light of the day. Lois is doing the sound effects for you. Lyra still held on, to, held on to Sirius, letting the magic pulse toward him as her lip curled. She felt the bile rise in her throat as she bore down on Sirius till she heard the inevitable crack of his ribs. Stop, you're not a killer, not like this. Lois yelled out, but made no attempt to stop Lear. She was pretty sure she couldn't even if she wanted to. In all her years in the Silver Griffins, Lois had never seen a power surge like she was witnessing build in Lyra. Lyra swallowed hard and let him drop to the ground, not moving. He's still alive. That may, be, that may prove to be a mistake. Louis, circle around the back of the house. Make sure nothing else is coming. Louis doubled back, keeping his eyes on the different witches and wizards until he was able to clear the far side of the wide opening large enough to drive trucks in side by side. He ran as fast as he could around the back, leaping over a pile of hoses, carefully wound and crossing over a small courtyard. Turn and swing the sword at an angle to the right, holding your arm close to your body. He did as he was told and swung hard, cutting off the tip of a wizard's wand, just as he was about to finish the spell that came out in a quickly fading mumble. Louis curled his lip and realized the sword had gotten him to hold back from wounding the wizard. He thought about taking out just one of these dark pawns, but the sound of howling and barking from the distant vineyards and shouting from the other side of the building stopped him. Another time, he said menacingly, and pushed the tip into the ribs of the wizard, nicking his shirt and easily tearing a gaping hole. The wizard turned and ran, looking back over his shoulder as Louis got to the back of the main house and ran inside, quickly covering the first floor. He saw the back of Juliana standing at the front door, but left her alone. Best not poke that dog just yet. He got to the large kitchen and opened every door, searching for hidden stairs or anyone hiding. Nothing. He ran down a long hallway away from the front door and stopped at the entrance to an office with bookshelves that went from floor to a vaulted ceiling, completely filled with books. Motherload, he whispered. He ran over and touched the spine on the closest shelf. Just what I thought. Ancient spell books. Fuck, what to take, what to take. He took out his wand, whispering a spell, the sword still in his other hand, its voice a constant in the background, chatter in his head. Run outside, now, run outside, now. For once, he ignored it. Something like this is never coming around again. He shook his head, squeezing his eyes shut. Run outside, now, run outside, now. He raised his wand, even as he gripped the handle of the sword, whispering a finder spell. He saw a book flutter in an upper shelf. Gotcha. Run outside, now, run outside, now. The sword became more urgent. I will, fuck, I will, one more minute. He ran to the library ladder and slid it, it slid it across the track, running along the top, jumping on as he pulled till it came to rest just under the shelf where the book was still vibrating. Lyra needs you. Run outside. Now. Run outside. Now. The dark mist approaches. Choose. Louis was halfway up the ladder. Are you fucking kidding me? He looked up at the shelf just as he heard a crack of electricity coming from the front of the house and smelled a foul odor. He looked up at the book one last time, grabbing a random book and leaped for the ground. You are becoming someone I don't recognize, Louis. Uh-huh, now we're talking to ourselves in the third person. 
He hesitated at the door to the library and spun his wand in a tight circle, creating a blue transparent fireball at the tip, lobbing it at the nearest shelves, igniting the old books instantly. The fire quickly spread as he whispered a spell to make sure it couldn't be easily extinguished. Man, that hurt. I'm actually picking sides. He ran for the nearest side door, running back to the open ground between the vineyards and the set of buildings, emerging in time to see someone run out of the house, ignorant of what he had just done. Okay, that was three chapters today. Hi, Nancy. And um, good stuff and um, more action to come. So tomorrow we will maybe do three more again, 14, 15, and 16. Um, and um, there's still a lot of books to go. I think there's about maybe 24 or 30 chapters. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of chapters still to go. Good stuff. Um, I hope everybody's having a good day and um, that you're getting outside a little. It is still spring, there are still flowers, and I hope you all are staying safe and um, that life is still worth, you know, that there's still good stuff going on. Um, write to me, I do write back. And um, thank you, Grace, for putting this up on YouTube every day. She does it really quickly and really efficiently. She is the best. And um, I'm doing great here. I'm getting out and walking. Um, it's always a good thing to do, but it, um, it's helping the lungs recuperate from the pneumonia. And um, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Have a good day. I love you all, and I'm glad we're getting to connect.